Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we have a discussion video. So, uh, recently I covered this thread right here on the screen uh, in, a, I think, yesterday's video because a developer responded to it, as you can see right over here. But I did state that they have a lot of good points, they have a lot of coding, and, you know, um, pretty much talking about the issue at hand, which is pretty much being, like, an issue of being granted a town. So, uh, I'm going to go over the whole thread. I'm going to see what they have to say, all the calculations, see how they found it. And uh, hopefully I can learn something. Hopefully you could learn something. And uh, yeah, we're going to go from there. So we're going to start at the top, go to the bottom. And uh, I think I'm going to stop whenever the developer answers, which is at the bottom of the page. So uh, let's get to it. So issues being granted a town. So since the new update, I cannot get a town being a vassal. I was able to get a castle, but if I take a town, I'm not one of the people shown to receive it in the vote. I'm getting very aggravated. I have taken many, many towns, uh, but just can't get on the vote. Can anyone help me out? Is there a new system or requirement I need to know about? Um, now the first person says, it needs to be close to one of your other fiefs. It's a really bad system since the rules gives themselves so much that everything is closer to their stuff. Although if you have the influence, you should still be able to nominate yourself, okay? Um, I, I, I have heard that you need to be closer to your other fiefs. I have heard that. Uh, okay, I understand. I have to be closer, but I have almost 600 influence. Okay. I can honestly say that I have never been granted a town that I've taken myself, n not one, uh, ever. In my last game, I just gave myself the towns I captured using the dev council mod. If the king wanted some say on who gets the town, maybe he should have captured it himself. <laughs> Yeah, but um, from my from my gameplays, right? So I think I have like a couple play playthroughs right now. Whenever I did join as a vassal, um, I've gotten mostly castles. It's it, it is rare to get a town. I have gotten a town, but it's very very rare as they state over here. So I do agree, it is a lot harder to get a town than a castle. But at the same time, I think it should be because towns are infinitely better than castles in my opinion uh okay so here's the uh guy who pretty much lists it off and does all of that and i think this is what we're here for so there's a lot that goes into being granted a fief than just distance there's an equation that is used to determine who gets on the ballot based on merits the merit scores of all clans in a faction are tallied up and the top three clans with the best merit score go gets on the ballot here's the equation i wonder how he got this equation Cause he's not a dev or anything like that. Maybe the dev stated it earlier, or he looked in the code. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he see like he looked in the code. Okay, let's read this. So, um, what do you call the big parentheses, like the square parentheses? Okay, so in square parentheses we got um, clan tier times thirty plus total clan strength divided by ten plus no fief bonus plus capture bonus plus ruler bonus. Uh, divided by value of captured fief plus total value of all clans fiefs okay and then all of that is times by the distance factor and then times 200,000 okay so now he's gonna list off what each one means they're kind of self-explanatory but let's see if um, me and you both got it right so clan tier is self-explanatory multiply by 30 yes yeah, so whatever your clan tier is in your uh, it's called games menu on your clan uh, screen. Then we have total clan strength is, a to is the sum total of the party strength of all the clans, vassal parties, and garrisons, as well as the militia parties of towns, castles, and villages. Caravans and village villager parties are not included, though. Party strength is determined by the same formula that the auto calc um, system uses. It doesn't include wounded troops. Total clan strength usually vary between 500 and 1500 but can be higher for a ruling clan with many fiefs, which is somewhat balanced out by their additional fief values. Okay. So I'm guessing this is the, what do you call it? The, um, if you go into kingdoms and you click on those, you can see like their total uh, clan strength. I think that's what it is. Then we have the no fief bonus is 30. If a clan has no fiefs and zero otherwise, Okay, so that's just to balance out, you know, if um, 
if a clan has a lot of strength, right? Like you stated before. Now, we have the capture bonus is 50 if the clan was the army leader that captured the new fief and zero otherwise. So if you are the army leader, you get an advantage. Um, then we have the ruler bonus is 100 if the clan, if the clan is, hold on. The, the ruler bonus is 100 if the clan is the faction's ruling clan and zero otherwise. So the ruler obviously gets a bonus in the vote. So you get a bonus if you're the commander of the leader you get a flat 50 and then uh if you're also just the ruler regardless if you're in the th in the army is a hundred okay uh the value of a settlement is calculated based on prosperity well where's the value of this oh, okay so the value so the value of the settlement that's the one that's divided by all the previous ones we just stated the value of the settlement is calculated based on prosperity and hearse of bound villages as well as other or not the villages are looted. Oh, as well as whether the villages are looted or not. So that goes into effect as well. Each faction values in an individual settlement differently based on average distance to the six nearest faction settlements. Whether or not the settlement is owned by the faction or whether or not the, ca the culture of the settlement is the same as the factions. By the way, sorry, it's kind of stormy. It's been storming for the past couple of days. So you might hear some thunder, probably some rain very soon. It is what it is. We have to work with it. Uh, so the values of the settlements typically fall somewhere in between the range of 400,000 to 4 million, depending on whether it, it's a town or castle in high or low prosperity. Okay. Then the distance factor ranges from 0 0.47 to 2 and is determined by how close the fief is to a clan's current fiefs. It takes the average distance of a clan's two closest fiefs if they have two or more, and the distance of a clan's only fief if they only have one. And the distance factor default is defaults to one if the clan has no fiefs. Okay, so if you have one fief or zero fiefs, it's still uh, the dis. I mean, like the this part of the distance factor is the same. So if you have two or more, then you get, um, I guess, an advantage, right? The distance factor nearly allows falls between wait distance factor nearly always falls between 0 0.5 and 1 under normal circumstances okay uh, i don't know i don't know what exactly factors into whether or not the clans will support your claim to a fief if you get on the ballot but two things that definitely contribute to it is clan strength and your clan's relationship with other npc clans okay so if you're friendly with them then you will get a better vote which makes sense uh, I would guess that the higher your clan's merit score is, the more likely a clan is to support you in the election. Okay, and clan merit score. Well, clan merit score is this, this whole equation over here. Okay. Um, where are we at? Okay, so the things... So the things that you can directly control to improve your odds on getting on a ballot and winning the election are your clan tier... Your total clan strength, use your companion parties to the fullest and don't skimp on the garrisons. So pretty much just, you know, have a lot of uh, units, whether in, in your uh, fiefs garrison or in your companion parties and stuff of that nature. The bigger you look, the more people will choose to vote for you, which makes kind of sense, right? They want a leader. They want somebody who's strong, right? Uh, whether or not you capture the fief, you're like, and you're, wait, wait, wait. Whether or not you capture, okay, so if you capture the fief, if you're part of that, you will also add on to uh, the chance of you being on the ballot. And then the last one is your relationship with other clans. So um, a good way to get relationship with other clans, um, if you didn't know, is just go out and trade with them. Like trade some of your items for their dinars. Yes, you're going to get, um, I think it's about 35 to 42% of the item's value but you will get a relationship bonus with them and your charm skill will also go up so if you didn't know so that's how kind of how you improve your relationship with other clans uh you should also make sure you keep at least 100 influence in the bank to vote for yourself true because you, if you're going to vote as a vassal i'm pretty sure it goes what 10 20 100 or 10 50 100 uh something of that nature right uh you will hurt your chances of getting on the ballot if you have many highly prosperous yet poorly guarded fiefs okay so if you don't if your garrisons are really low then they might not want to vote for you which kind of makes sense because they might think oh since your garrison is low then you know they're not well protected 
So all these are common sense type of things, but it's good to know that this is how it's calculated. Now, rulers have an advantage because of several factors. They are clan tier 6, which directly boosts their score, and also allows them to keep larger parties, uh, which boosts their clan strength bonus. True. They also get the flat 100 point ruler bonus. They often lead the armies that, that besiege and capture fiefs. Also true. Finally, because the thief... Oh, be, finally, because the thief... Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I can't read today. Finally, because the fief up for grabs is given to the ruler's clan initially, it is used as one of the two closest fiefs in the distance factor. And because the distance is zero, the average distance just becomes half of the next closest fief's distance. Oh, that's interesting. So right after a fief is taken, right, it's defaulted to the ruler's clans before the vote. So when this calculation is being made, the distance factor is always going to be in their favor because, you know, they're going to get a flat zero because, like, you know what I mean? The thief is right there. It's, it's like, it's, oh, it's very close. I didn't know that. That's a very uh, interesting fact. Uh, one minor thing that you can do to hurt a ruler's chance of getting elected on the ballot is to prevent your army from donating troops to, well, hold on, is to prevent your army from donating troops to a newly captured Selman's garrison until after the election. Ah, that makes sense because look, if, um, what's it called? Since that initially becomes their fief, right? Their distance score is better, but the garrison is also at zero most of the times and that will count against them. So that kind of makes sense. So, um, don't just automatically donate to the garrison. You might as well do the vote first and then donate to the garrison. That makes sense. I understand that. Okay. Uh, also ha I also have I also haven't looked into the uh, controls a ruler decision to out overrule a vote or not. I I don't know if they um. They definitely overrule, but yeah okay so he hasn't found that in the code. Here's the method that handles most of the merit score calculations. Here it is. Can I make this bigger? I can. Okay so we have. Ooh it's a lot. I'm not the best at like describing how to code. I did some coding classes, but pretty much like you have to um, name name the function or name, not the function, name like the variable that you're gonna use, right? Like with the float and ints. Ints are usually numbers, I'm pretty sure. Floats or something else. I'm not the best at it, but first you have to define it. Then you could use it in a, you know, in an equation of sorts. And uh, this equation here, the block of code does three things, counts how many fiefs a clan owns, sums the total settlement value of all owned fiefs, finds the distance of the clan's two closest fiefs to the newly captured fief. Okay. Okay, so that's the equation does all those three things. And then we have, if a clan has no fiefs, it uses the average distance between the two towns on the campaign map. Okay. Now this one over here, if a clan has two or more fiefs, it averages the distance of the two closest to the newly captured fief. Oh my goodness. You see how all of this <laughs> goes into a small little like decision, small little equation. Like this is the equation, right? And for this equation to work, this is what you have to code. That is one of the reasons why I quit coding. I'm not going to lie to you. It got really complex real quick. But okay. Um, so pretty much this just shows you pretty much all the um, points that we just talked about. You guys can pause it on the screen and look at all these points. But pretty much it just goes down the line same way that we just did over here. Right? And uh, like I said before, this pretty much is this equation right here. But in like a coded language. So let's see what people got to say. So thanks for the detailed analysis. Yes, thank you. Hey, thank you. For real. You really did, you know, you did your research. I really appreciate that. Uh, I just made a small mod that fixes this by changing default owner to capturer. Okay. Oh, so he changed the whole, like, um, it defaults to that the castle, or, or not the castle, that the, the fief defaults to the uh, ruler. So he made a, a little mod or a little code change 
that uh, makes it what's it called that changes the default owner to the capture okay so pretty much with okay but capture as in what the army leader I'm pretty sure it means like the army leader right so um, okay and it really works other lords began to vote for me okay it's good Inter interesting thanks for sharing I'm sure it works well I tend to think that including the newly captured settlement in the calculation at all was just an oversight doesn't seem intended to me I think that if the statement at the start of the loop should probably read if settlement owner clan equals clan is decision outcome clan and settlement is fortification and settlement town does not equal this settlement town Jesus Christ I'll be honest with you uh, <laughs> it's been a long time uh, that would check to make sure that the capture settlement does not get lumped into the rest of the clan's fiefs okay uh, then down where it calculates the total strength of the clan it should include something like float total strength equals clans total strength minus parentheses this settlement owner clan equal okay and uh, that equation is to make sure the strength of the garrison party of the newly captured fief is not included in okay so these two things are pretty much um these two equations that i just talked about or he just talked about so the first one would check uh the other what's it called other settlements and uh pretty much make it so the newly captured one is not counted in the decision and also the newly captured garrison uh of the fief will not count in the decision as well i think these definitely should be changed while minor but i think they should be changed it, it might have a you know a huge effect like you know it actually working and, and like the lords you know what i'm saying actually voting for you uh, probably you're right, but I believe that the capture should have merit to own the settlement than the ruler, who who is uh, already able to overrule the decision. Overrule the decision. Okay. Uh, yep, I don't necessarily disagree, especially since the capture's clan's total strength will still likely be temporarily reduced by the casualties taken in the siege by the time the election rolls around. As a frame of reference, though, the 50-point bonus from being the capture is roughly equivalent to having 520 extra tier two troops added to your clan strength which is not insignificant okay here's my hot take here's my hot take so while i agree that the captures and obviously the players should get more castles and stuff here's here's the thing i feel like historically speaking that when when stuff like this does happen let's say um an army that's under you know a kingdom a certain kingdom takes over a castle right it's at all it's it's pretty much the uh what do you call it the ruler or king's decision who gets that you know so while i do agree i guess for the game to make it more fun you know what i mean stuff doesn't have to be historically accurate all the time sometimes to make a game more fun it doesn't have to be accurate but i think the current system while it sucks that you only get like one or two castles sometimes a town it's kind of realistic if that kind of makes sense right but I'm not opposed to them making it more uh, fun, you know, because it's not all about being realistic. The game is about having fun, you know, enjoying it. So I agree, you know, it could be changed. Oh, uh, real nice pose based on the formula. It really should have been on the ballot for most of the towns as they were all clustered together. I've had a high clan tier and my clan strength was really high as well. With the capture bonus, I should have at least merited consideration. Uh, instead, the choices were always lords that I've never heard of with dubious loyalties at best. Okay, I think the capture bonus needs to be seriously increased. At least the way the vassal that took the new fief would have a shot of getting to keep it. Okay. Let's see what he has to say. Working through a math a few times, I think issues that... I think... I think the issue... There is that new clans effectively get a double bonus. Once from the flat no feast bonus, then another boost from the rating the distance as one. Basically, new clans get full power while the player usually gets a fractional amount, assuming the player already has a fief. Okay, yes, but at the same time, I think that, um, you know, if a clan just joins, 
uh, I think it should be a priority to give them a place to give them some land, right? So I kind of like how the game does that. If a clan just joined, it has nothing, they should be up, you know what I mean? They should be in the vote because they need some land as well. Um, and for this, the capture bonus being, again, if it's just increased a little bit more, that's fine. Let's say instead of just getting one or two castles in like maybe a town, right? You get like four castles in like a town. But like, I don't think it should be something crazy because as a vassal, you're under somebody's rule, if that kind of makes sense, right? If you want a lot more fiefs, you can start your own kingdom. And then obviously you're going to have the burden of having your own kingdom. So therefore you're going to have more fiefs because you're the ruler. But I think if you're going to be a vassal, I also think you shouldn't have too much um, land because you're only part of the system. You're not the head of the system. That kind of makes sense. But a little bit, a little bit bigger increase would not be bad. I don't, I don't disagree with it. Uh, can you please repost it in a higher level form so developers can see it? I sure can. They put it there. Uh, we got some more mods being shown here. Yes, I was looking for this mod, but I couldn't for the for the life of me uh, remember its name or yours. Oh, there's a lot of thunder outside. At any rate, is it good to get this in front of the devs' eyes because it really looks good, like a design oversight? And boom, the devs have found it. And I'm happy the devs have found it. They said they're going to deal with the problem. I think that's very cool. And uh, yeah, we're going to see where it goes from there. But um, that's pretty much going to be the video for today. You know, I wish I knew Cody a little bit more to kind of explain it better. But um, I think he does a great job explaining it. I'm pretty sure I, I have seen his name before and he has um, provided some detailed things that have to do with the code in the game. And I do appreciate him. So if you do have like a form thing, I don't know, like, is there a way to upvote stuff on here? I have no clue, but um, show him some support if you do uh, appreciate the time he puts in and the content he shows. And obviously, you know, if he didn't do this, we wouldn't get, uh, what's it called, a change from the developers soon. So, hey. I think it's great. So, uh, yeah, like always, uh, this will be down below if you guys want to read about it. I forgot to say that in the beginning. But like always, ask me any questions, any concerns, and uh, stay safe.